Hi everyone, uh, this is Chris from Revenge Performance. Uh, today we're going to go over some components involved in your center differential for your all-wheel drive 3000 GT or Dodge Stealth. Uh, a lot of these components are talked about a lot, uh, but not everyone really knows what they're all about. And also, uh, even some experienced uh, drivetrain shops don't know exactly how this unit works or how to take it apart. And so we're going to show you how to put one back together and that should give you a really good idea how they're put together and how to take one apart. Uh, there are several different components to this outfit here. Um, basically, uh, you have what everyone likes to talk about, your viscous coupling unit. This is called the VCU. Uh, this element is responsible for the limited slip action in your center differential. Uh, there's a couple of things to look out for uh, when you have these apart to make sure this is good. Um, first of all, check to see if these holes have a lot of wear here where the pins engage. And that can be a cause for concern as that causes some clunking in your drivetrain and things like that. Uh, the other thing you're going to look for is any kind of discoloration around here. And especially any type of uh, black goo or silicon or anything coming out of here would indicate that this VCU is blown. Uh, additionally, you should be able to grip the centerpiece and not move it. Uh, if you can move this up and down, that means that the O-rings in here are bad and this uh, viscous coupling unit is no longer functioning. Uh, you can also put your little sun gear in here and you can attempt to turn this. And uh, you can also put this in a vise and use some tooling to get the exact torque measurement on this rotational torque. Uh, you're kind of looking for uh, about 20 foot pounds once that kind of gets going. Um, but if you can't turn this by hand whatsoever, uh, most likely the unit's good. And so that's just a really quick check you can do. So that's the viscous coupling unit. Uh, if these are bad, they contaminate the transmission fluid and they also will basically make your car uh, act like it's front wheel drive because the front wheels will spin very easily. Now the next component is the sun gear. Uh, so that is this little piece here. Uh, then we have the planetary carrier assembly and the planets. Uh, so this is kind of similar to a automatic transmission in the way that these little gears work. Uh, you want to make sure these pins aren't backed out or loose. Uh, they will come out, uh, particularly if you use a punch and that sort of thing. Um, but normally they should be pretty snug in there. If these are rounded out in here, uh, if this hole is messed up, then that means that this carrier assembly needs to be replaced. Uh, so basically the way this works is your VC will be upside down like that. You have these three pins. The sun gear goes internally to these splines here. And then this uh, planetary assembly here goes on top. And once you rotate, that will actually engage these pins and there'll no longer be a gap here. If that doesn't engage like that, then it's not fully seated and it's not gonna work. Uh, the other major component to this is your basically your center differential housing here. Uh, this has a bearing on each end. Uh, normally we replace these, they tend to collect a lot of dirt in that part of the case and these will get scored and scratched up. So you need to check out for that. I will also mention uh, these are a very good trap for trash, uh, so you need to be very careful cleaning these out. It's extremely difficult to clean these out uh, completely. If you have an ultrasonic cleaner, that's a great way to go. Uh, we go through a several step process to clean these out. Uh, you'll want to take a little toothbrush or something and get inside of each one of these splines and get all the material out of there, uh, or that could obviously get into your new transmission fluid after you do a rebuild, and nobody really wants that. Uh, the other small piece here is basically the cap for the center differential. Um, this also contains a bearing on here. And we're gonna show you the way this secures to the case, but it's basically through these four holes. There's four holes around the perimeter of this cap, and there's roll pins that go in from the outside of this case uh, through this cap, and that holds everything together. Uh, another piece, there's a little needle bearing in here. Uh, just make sure that that's not all scored up. They really don't fail often at all, so it's not something that you would just uh, replace as part of a typical setup. Um, but it is able to be gotten and things like that. Uh, there's a part number on here if you need to. It is an HK2520. Uh, uh, INA makes that bearing and you can get those pretty readily. And that will just drive out on this setup here. Uh, also you want to check, just right here, look for any scoring. And that's kind of a thrust surface. Um, this one's fine. Um, as long as you can't really feel any of that, you're good to go on that. 
You also want to look for cracks or anything like that in this housing assembly. And be careful when you press this new bearing on here. Uh, if you press too hard, it's quite easy to crack this if you have a powerful press, so just watch out. Uh, the final part to your center differential is probably a part that most people have heard of. Uh, this is the output shaft. Uh, this is a 25 spline, which refers to the splines on this end and how many of those there are. Uh, and this is also a 300M unit uh, that is also coated with an anti-corrosive. Uh, this is many, many times stronger than stock. And so this is great if yours is worn and where you want to do some drag racing or anything like that, uh, far superior to an OEM unit. Uh, with any of these output shafts, it is critical that you keep these splines greased and also that your transfer case spool, the splines that this inserts into, are also uh, very good or you'll just immediately wear this out from the rotating action there. Uh, so a lot of our customers will get their transfer case and their transmission rebuilt at the same time and that way the input and output splines are in great shape and there's no extra wear there. Um, but when you're putting that together, use some anti-seize or some marine grease or something like that on these splines to just keep corrosion out because they will rust if you do not. So let's go ahead and put this together. Pretty straightforward. Um, one thing you do want to do uh, is keep a little grease on hand uh, or just a little bit of transmission fluid will work too. You don't really have to use anything too special. And we're just going to want to grease the areas here that come into contact with things like the bottom of this VCU here. Just don't want to dry start. Uh, this will actually uh, turn inside there, and you don't want that to be turning dry. And this will kind of drop into place, you know, and you can rotate it easily here, and you can see that that's all lubricated. Uh, the next piece here, you can put that in there, sun gear. And then you can grease the sun gear splines on the outside, just to make sure that those aren't dry because they do turn uh, inside these planetary gears here. You also can grease this outer part here. Get that in there. And again, you can use oil. That's fine too. Um, this holds up a little bit better through shipping and things like that. You don't have to worry about the oil coming out. Uh, so most of the time we use uh, either just some uh, chassis lubricant or uh, some assembly lubricant designed specifically for transmissions. If this was an automatic, I'd be very a lot more particular about the type of uh, grease or thing like that you'd use. Okay, and so now you'll see these gears in here. These interface with that and also these three pins here. You can stick a little grease on those pins if you want. They don't really move too much though. So we would have to stick that in there. And this will kind of settle in. And uh, you can see there, we actually got lucky and that hit the pins on the first try. Um, I still like to pull it out just to be sure I'm not being deceived here. Uh, if the pins are not engaged, you can see that this is a little bit proud. You can see right there that sticks up some. Uh, so we'll just rotate that. And there it fell right into those pins in the VCU. So you know that that's fully assembled. Um, the next part we need to do is we need to put our output shaft in. And there's a couple of areas here that we want to lubricate as well. Uh, just in case those contact anything inside of there. A little grease on that. A little bit on there. Doesn't have to get too serious. Um, when you get your transmission fully assembled, you'll want to grease this area here where my thumb is um, because that goes through the seal. Okay, so this is a little tricky. You put this in here, but you also need to make sure that your other components don't fall out. And so now we're going to get these splines to line up. There's splines in that assembly there. And they should go right in, um, but you may find quite often, uh, it takes a little bit of tapping to get that in. Fully seated. You want to make sure that's fully seated, or when you go to assemble this, uh, you'll find that you can't get your cap on, and that sort of thing. Okay, so that's fully in there see here we need to put our cap on so I'll put a little grease on those needle bearings in there but those aren't dry and we're gonna want to hopefully you can see this well enough but there are little holes where my finger is on both the cap and the center differential housing we want to align those um, the other thing I want to do is just lift up on this output shaft because this has a tendency to be out of square until you get it together and so I just lift up on that 
and that'll help me kind of get this together. And as you go, you can rotate it and things of that nature. Um, once we get it in a little bit, we'll probably just tap on a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that, and yeah, watch out, it doesn't roll away from you, it'll do that. Obviously, we don't wanna beat on our bearing race here, or sorry, our bearing cage here. Uh, so I'm gonna use a tool here to hit the center of this. And it's pretty important that you get that all the way in. Uh, once that's all the way in, these holes here will line up perfectly. Uh, if you don't, uh, just put a little punch in there and kind of arrange those a little bit. Uh, you can see that this is super close, so I don't think we're gonna have a problem. Okay, so the final piece of the puzzle. The final piece of the puzzle is we need to put these, these uh, roll pins in here, these spring pins, uh, in those little holes. So what I like to do is use some Loctite on the pins, because if these pins were to come out, that would be pretty catastrophic. They would spin and tear up your transmission case almost in instantly. Um, I actually don't like to use a punch for that, just because you're not wanting that to go in any deeper than flush uh, with the outside of this case here. Uh, if you drive it in too far, then you're gonna have to just take it back apart. And I will note while I'm talking about these pins, uh, to assemble these or disassemble these, you drive those pins in as far as they'll go, but they won't come out completely. And then just tap on the opposite end of the output shaft to knock this whole thing apart. Pretty simple, really. Uh, once they've been together for many years, though, sometimes it can be a little bit reluctant uh, to come apart. Uh, I'm using a high strength Loctite, um, but you really don't have to. Uh, medium strength is fine, 242 or something like that. And uh, if they go in pretty easy, but if for some reason you're worried about mushrooming them, you obviously can use a uh, pin punch to do that, which we do sometimes. I just like being assured that those are not gonna go any deeper than I want them, want them to. And that's really about it. So we have our center differential here and you can see exactly what we got going on with this works just fine uh, want to make sure you don't leave any lockdown on the outside of that um, but this is ready to go and so now we're gonna go ahead and put this in the end case in the mid housing and we'll set the bearing preloads on these bearings by using the solder method and uh, we'll be good to go on that and so I hope this has been helpful uh, a lot of people don't know how to take these apart um, but really, once you know what they're comprised of, it really couldn't be much simpler uh, as long as you follow a few of the steps. To recap, if you want to take this apart, drive these pins in as far as they can go, and then tap on the other side of this output shaft, and this will all just slide right apart. Clean it very thoroughly, lubricate everything on installation, and you won't have any problems. Uh, one last note, I know I keep saying that, but one last note, make sure that none of these teeth are chipped. Uh, these are kind of an area that stands out enough. They get impacted easily. Uh, so just roll this over and look at each tooth and make sure nothing's chipped or bent or you're going to have a noise or a tooth failure. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, please check out the other videos on our YouTube channel. And uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Uh, ring the bell and you'll see when our new ones come up. Uh, we'll try periodically to have short little videos like this. Uh, in addition to the larger ones we do with the car, uh, just so more and more knowledge gets spread about our drivetrains. Uh, this has been Chris Bankin, and uh, we hope you check us out at revengeperformance.com.